Well, hello there, human sippies, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Uh, welcome aboard the Love Train on Bushkin. Today we're going to be looking at two tanks that have quite similar issues. Uh, one of them is the Leopard 1, which is going to feature just after this a video that I've been trying to feature in a uh, in a, no, a game that I've been trying to feature in a video. This is my first time on YouTube, guys. Thanks very much for bearing with me um, for quite some time now. Uh, that's uh, Sparky's video on Normandy uh, in the Leopard 1. And this game from Anorak, which is a lovely game in the Bat Chathion uh, 25T on uh, Naval Frontier. The thing that defines both these tanks is speed. 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 I am speed. Uh, basically, these are tanks, the Leopard and the Bat Chat, that have ferocious engines and the ability to really move mountains when they have to but at the same time have what could best be termed an armor profile that is a little bit delinquent variable it doesn't know if it's an armor profile or a pair of casual slacks uh worn to the yacht club it's it's the armor profile that you have when you're not really having an armor profile um despite the fact that you saw a very very uh, interesting bounce from that AMX on the bat chat at the start of the game. That is absolutely the exception and not the rule. Uh, and both these tanks really reward drivers who are able to trade damage for distance. Uh, and by that I mean you'll see many instances in these games where they they set themselves up positionally better than the opposition. You might have noticed that there was a lot of damage farmed so far from the guys in the red team crossing, the two heavies that were crossing the middle of the map uh, in a pretty standard formation by the Batchat. Uh, Anorak was quite capable of clipping out on that E100 and the AMX 50B without giving himself a whole lot of exposure. And that's because his positional play was better. And just there you saw his positional play... Uh, fully on display again and he was aware of the guys coming around behind him so he put the carcass of the m48 the now defunct uh m48 pitbull from uh the red team between him and the bad guys because there was a lot of big high alpha damage tanks that were going to give him a little bit of strife there namely that kpf pz70 uh which is an awfully large amount of he with that crazy 150 rocket launching kind of gun and this is what you have to be able to do in these very lightly armored tanks now, you're about to see a AMX 50B who, for want of a better word, is a juvenile idiot, start carrying on. His name is Smell My Finger. Uh, and from that name, you have probably surmised all you will ever need to surmise about the AMX 50B on this team until he grows up just a touch. Anyway, let's, uh, let's just leave it at that. He's going to start blaming the world's problems, of course, on the 4,000 damage bat chat that's been running around with no armor in the middle of all these tanks because, you know, he's a Muppet. What I do like about this next passage of play, you saw early on the Anorak here, he snuck under the guns as he came out from that center section where the Leopard 1 is. Uh, the E100 on the other team had taken up the position where he was actually in opposition to the position where he was farmed from. Uh, and he was then shooting across and he got the, bat, the Leopard PTA uh, as he strolled across another. And this is the bane of the bat chat. Very low pen gun. It really is. Um, really low penetration gun. And he gets unlucky here uh, in that you can see the Leopard pops and it hits the gun of the dead 183. I mean, we've all had that happen to us. So you know that he was aware of where the E100 was. He was aware of where that KPFP... 70 was he was aware of where the leopard one was and even though the 50b won't stop talking he's going to show that he is not in fact dumb he's quite an intelligent player who does a very very good job here with very limited resources he's on 692 hit points he is going to use damage for distance as an absolute message to live by this is his mission statement right here he's a clipper so he knows that he can dump big stinking wads of damage out all at once he can get 930 average alpha out if he can get the leopard one all at once involved with him clipping and he's happy to take another shot there because he's going to land three shots that's a massive hit point trade he's still above an average alpha roll for an ap round or an apcr round rather from the leopard one but again that clip he just has to wait nine seconds and keep that wall between him and still suck 
You still suck, says small my finger. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> Just, man, stop it. Uh, and that's a really good job. And that is, that is bat chat driving 101 right there. You are a clipper. You are not a tank that wants to stand directly next to another tank and just trade. What you want to do is take at most one shot from the other guy and dump at best three shots from you. That gives you the ability with a medium tank to take say 350 to 500 depending on if they fire HE at you and dump off 900 alpha if you know what you're doing. For all that though, he has done 5.5k damage and he now has to go and find a single shot E100 that he's actually missed a kill shot on three times. Now that's a lot. That's a lot of kill shot misses and that's something that happens a lot with bat chats. You are, when you're dealing with big heavy tanks, you struggle at times to convert on your positioning. And I guess that's one of the reasons why the bat chat is, um, you know, it's a tough drive at times because especially on maps like Himmelsdorf and such, uh, there are not a lot of angles that you can get into where you've got the long sight lines you need to get that first shot off unsighted. So then you can maybe get at least two, possibly three off, depending on if the other guy's fired or not. So he's going to just have to put the balls on the uh, on the line here and have a crack because that E100, he wants to get the win. He is an aggressive driver, this young man, and he is going for gold and he's found him. The E100 misses and he hits it's all down to that it's all down to that great game regardless 5600 damage massive carry uh and the amex 50b did 96 yep you my friend are what's commonly termed uh probably a little bit young let's just say he's a young kid Sounds silly things here's sparky tom uh doing good things on the well that's an interesting little move there. Hey, uh, this is the traditional spotter's position and Sparky is really looking to help his team with that. That was absolutely not really to farm damage from his perspective. He pushed into the area where the bat chat is there and they're proximity spotting each other. Sparky's setting up to exit stage right, which he does. Barney's out of that one. There are a couple of TDs at the back. And being a tier 10 game, there's always going to be at least three TDs, it seems. Uh, the Waffle Tractor is playing a very, very aggressive. He has a penchant for aggressive play. That 800, that 1400, you'd have to think there's a Jaegeru on the other side. Indeed, there is. And again, not very lucky with the old R and Jesus there, Spark. But the WZ has eyes only for that IS-7. And well, he should, because the IS-7 is a one-shot, and it is a very, very important thing to clear a tank. And wow... That just popped up out of nowhere. That AMX was absolutely not thinking it through. That was uh, that was a rough gig. Really exposed in front of a whole lot of TDs and everything else up the top there. So far too aggressive from the AMX. But we've lost one to each. And things are pretty even Stevens at the moment. Again, you saw in the last map that uh, the bat chat was very, very conscious of where the enemy TDs and big guns were, the 150s. You might have noted too that that was a HE round that bounced off Sparky. Uh, he was obviously penable for HE from the 130mm there of the WZ. And that was why you saw 144 rather than a full big-ass roll. Again, Type 61 should know better than that. You cannot push the top of that hill and expect to come away a winner. Now, this is a very nice gun, this. Very nice gun. But for all that, that's still quite a an arsey little shot there we go again that one doesn't go in and again takes another he round everyone's firing he at the leopard and it's not coming off and that's one of the things when you're firing at a leopard the turret can actually bounce a little bit of that he the tort has good he pen it's got a hash round that does 110 millimeters of pen i think it's 110 could be a touch more actually i'll uh, i'll check that one out I normally have all the numbers on the, you know, at snap, 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 at my beck and call. Let's pause. This is one of the great things about running a YouTube channel. Yeah, 120 millimeters for the pen on the hash round for the tort. Look at Sparky. He has done the same thing as our mate in the bat chat. He's only got 3K so far. Well, only 3K. There's three tanks left alive on the red team, and he's done a really good job regardless. But he's done... He's done it without really taking a huge amount of risk. Now, he has received two shots that have both been HE rounds that haven't gone through. Now, if they had been AP rounds, then he could quite quite easily be at like 800 hit points right now. But they weren't. So, 
you know, more full him. Uh, the guy's firing at him. You might see also there is a little bit of an issue going on with the internet here. This is two bat chats versus a bat chat and wondering where the uh, 268 and the Yageru are because both this bat chat and the Leopard 1 are not very keen on running into a Yageru. Uh, and Sparky and the bat chat do a very good job here. There's the Yageru at the back. They pincer this guy while being fully cognizant of the fact that there's a Yageru there and there has to be a 268 in the A cap because that was going off. So they really don't give this bat chat much of a chance. They burn some hit points, but at the same time, they don't give the Jaegeru any shots. So if you're looking at a uh, a very two passages of play from these two videos as a driver of a small, lightly armored vehicle, then uh, have a look at that one and the bat chat going around driving the Leo before. Uses the bush here too, and then tracks. And then when the tracking is done, uses that as an opportunity to move forward. Gets another one in, dumps another one. He's going to sneak around behind the Yageru, get a shot on the side, and then just drive on through. Absolutely just drive on through. No stress, no qualms. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. This next passage of play, I, I feel so bad for this 268. A lot of Blitz is RNG. The 268 has not done badly here. Sparky's got five kills in the Leopard 1. Watch where the 268 is as he crests this hill. This is so rough. 268 didn't do anything wrong. But he just got caught. He absolutely got caught in the wrong spot. Like, and it wasn't because he did it wrong. It was just because as he was driving up, the Leo was driving over the other side of the hill and was doing it at extreme levels of pace. And that meant that Sparky absolutely just got to farm and COD this guy. And I think that is kind of a reward for all the hard work he did earlier in the game and the great positional play displayed throughout. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's driving lightly armored, variably armored vehicles and driving them well. I'm Bushka. I'm going to subscribe, like the videos, enjoy yourself, walk the dog, and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.